How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another platformer tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be adding in our enemy AI. So we already have our enemy asset over here. So let's move it to where we want it to be. So for the demo I had it over here in this open area and that's important because when we set this up it'll automatically bounce off of solid objects like our tile map. So it'll automatically bounce off of areas that have walls but it won't bounce off of things that don't. So we need to set it up for that and we need to set it up just in general. Now we want to have the very classic Mario-like AI where it just moves left and right and you jump on their heads and they die. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to give it the behavior of platform, just like our player, and we're going to also give it an instance variable. Now first, let's go to our platform behavior and let's double click on default controls and turn that off. Then let's turn down our max speed because we don't want it to be as fast as our player, so let's put it down to like 150. Then we want to give it the instance variable of direction. We want to actually be able to control what direction this enemy is going to be in at all times. So let's hit OK. We want to make it a text variable. That way we can store actual uh, text to see if it's moving to the left or to the right. Now that that's set up, let's go to our event sheet here and let's go to our pause group and hit B. And what we want to do is we want to go to our enemy and we want to find out if our enemy is moving. So we're already going to set it up. And this is kind of a redundant check because we only have one animation for this enemy. But it's important because if in case you wanted to add in a way for it to be idle, you would compare the distance between the enemy and the player. Uh, I've included the idle animations there so you can do that. And this is just a good check to always make sure that we know how the animation is being called. So if the enemy is moving, then what we're going to do is we're going to go to enemy, set the animation to walk. And if you remember that that's what we called it, uh, that's the only animation the enemy has. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take this event and hit G on the keyboard and call this our enemy AI group. And we're going to put it in there. So now I can take that group and hit B to make some more sub events. What we're going to do is we're going to make an on created event. And this created event is actually going to trigger for every instance that we have. So it's kind of like the for each statement, but this is going to be triggered on the start of the layout when this is actually created. So if we have a copy of it, that's when it's going to trigger for every single one. So when every single instance of this enemy is created, we're going to set the value of direction to be different every single time. To do that, we're just going to say direction equals choose between left and right and close out just like that. Now that is going to randomize it for every single copy that we have. And what we're going to do then is we're going to find out what we want to do with the direction when it's actually set. So to do this, I'm going to hit B on the group and I'm going to double click on this event and go to our enemy, compare the instance variable of direction. And now I want to find out what are we going to do when it when direction equals left and vice versa. I'm going to copy and paste and find out what are we going to do when it equals to the right. OK, so now that we have that, it's very simple. When we're facing to the left, we want to simulate control to the left. So let's go with that. Let's do object enemy, simulate control to the left and vice versa. We're going to cut a control click and we're going to do that for the right. When we're facing to the right, we are going to go to the right or when we actually call the direction to be the right. So now on created, it's going to choose immediately. As soon as it creates, it's going to fall down. It's going to collide and the direction is going to tell it if it wants to move left or if it moves right. But what it also needs to tell it is what direction it's facing. And to do that, we're just going to set the mirrored or not mirrored. So if we're facing to the left, we're going to type in mirrored and we're going to hit OK because our sprite is actually facing to the right. So if we're facing to the right, we're going to make sure that it goes back. And to make it go back, we're going to set it to not mirrored. So that should work pretty fine. But now what we need to do is we need to actually check to see if we have collision. If we have a wall next, what's going to happen? Now, just because it'll automatically bounce off of this doesn't mean that it'll actually flip and move. So what we need to do is we need to create two colliders for it. And in addition to that, we need to check for wall. So let's actually create these colliders. Let's double click and make a new sprite. Let's make this 32 by 32 and hit OK. And what we're going to do is I'm going to call this object enemy collision L for left. And I'm going to right click clone object type and I'm going to flip it to object enemy collision right. I'm going to put the left one over here kind of towards the edge and I'm going to get it close to the bounding box as I can from the tile map and to the right. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now we're going to mess around with that. That might be uh, the wrong spot for it, but I think that should be fine. And these are separate objects. We clone them, but they're just completely separate blank objects for our collision. So what we're going to do in our enemy AI group is we're going to hit B and we're going to double click and see if our enemy 
under the platform behavior has a wall to the left. And we're going to copy and paste and find out if it has a wall to the right. Now, this is going to trigger for the walls, but not for these individual collisions. So let's do it for the individual collision. So we're going to hit Y on the keyboard and we're going to hit C. And if our enemy is overlapping at an offset. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to check the collision at an offset. Now, we've already done it for the platform where it actually collides with its collider. So technically, you can do it the same way. This is just another way to do it that I feel like showing you. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say if our enemy is colliding with, uh, this is to the left. So if we're colliding to the left uh, at the X offset of one pixel, then we're going to hit OK. And then what we're going to do is set the direction to the right. So let me control click this down. Let me double click here. And now I'm just going to completely change it from choose and I want it to be to the right. So now when we hit the left wall or we hit the left collision, we're flipping and we're simulating the right control and vice versa. I'm going to copy this down and paste this over here and I'm going to flip this to the left. Now, the last thing I need to copy down is the overlap. So let's copy that. Let's hit Y on this condition to make it an or statement and hit control V. Let's double click and let's change this to collision right. So what the overlapping is actually doing, if I actually grab our enemy here, it's only going to trigger when we're overlapping this by one pixel, then it's actually going to flip it and simulate the control. So let's hit save and let's see how this works. This work this should work pretty well. I think I did everything correctly. So let's go over here and let's see if our guy is walking and bouncing off. And there he goes. So he's going to walk all the way to the edge. And there he goes. Cool. Uh, so now that we have that done, what we need to do is we need to find out what happens when we collide with the enemy or when we collide with our player and when we overlap with our player. So what we want to do is we want to set it up so we can actually jump on its head. That would be the fun part. So to do this, let's go to our enemy AI. Let's hit B on the keyboard. And first, let's find out what happens when we actually collide with the enemy. That's what we want to know because we actually want to see it jump on, on its head. We actually want to be able to jump on top and to do that we're going to collide versus overlap when we overlap and we just walk through it that's when we're going to actually take damage so let me let me actually set up both of these because that way it'll make more sense what we're going to do is we're going to double click here and we're going to say if the player collides with the enemy let's find our enemy here that's what we want to have for that statement for this event what we want to have happen is Let's copy and paste this and let's change it from collision to overlapping the enemy. So our overlap is going to be for when the player takes damage. And our collision is going to be for when we jump on the enemy's head. Enemy head. Cool. So what we're going to do for our jumping on head is we're going to add in one more condition here. So we're going to make it an and statement. And to do that, we want to find out if the player's actually falling down. So if we're on the end of our jump, because by the time we jump up, it'll actually be falling downwards and actually that's the trigger we want. So we wanna find out if we're also falling. Now, if we are falling, we're gonna to have to add some actions here, but to actually trigger to jump on the enemy's head, we need a sub event. And this sub event is going to be comparing two different variables. So let's go system, compare two values. Uh, not variables, values. We're going to compare object player dot y, and we want to find out if it's less than the object enemy dot y. And if it is, then we can just destroy the enemy because that's going to already check for collision, already going to find out if we're falling, and then we're going to find out if the player is on top of the enemy. And if it is, then we're just going to say enemy destroy. Now we're going to do one more thing here. We're just going to set it up. We're going to hit B to make another sub event. And this is where we're going to actually drop our, uh, our health. So when we drop our health, we're going to, um, when we, when we kill the player, the, I mean, the, oh my God, when we kill the enemy, the enemy is going to drop health for the player. So to do that, we're going to double click here, system trigger once while true. And then we're going to have the enemy spawn the health. So let's go spawn another object. And I don't know, did I bring it in? Yes, I did. Uh, object health pickup. That's what we want to spawn. And we want to spawn this on the layer entities and hit OK. Now there's one other check that we want to do here. And that's going to be the health check because this will happen every single time. It'll, con it'll constantly spawn health pickups. And we don't want that. We only want it to spawn a health pickup 
if we're actually injured. So to do this, we're just gonna add in another condition. We're gonna hit C on the trigger once, and we're gonna say if the player's, uh, compare instance variable, if the player's health is not equal to zero. So if you remember how we set up our health system, our zero is actually our full health. So if we're not equal to full health, then it's okay when you kill an enemy for it to spawn. But if it does equal full health, then it won't spawn at all. So that's what we're going to do for that. Let's hit save and let's watch this work. And then we're gonna program in for when we are actually injured. So let's go all the way over here and jump on its head and it dies. Cool. So that worked out pretty well. It spawned our health pickup and it actually destroyed. But we need more feedback. And that's something that is a really nice gameplay element that these games have. We just need the little bit of feedback for our player to actually bump up a little bit when it actually jumped on its head. So to do it, what we're going to do is we're going to on our collision, we're going to go to our player and we're going to set the vector Y to be minus 350. You can mess around with that number all you want, but I found that 350 actually goes a little bit higher. The other thing I want to do here is I actually want to call our screen shake function. If you remember our screen shake function from before, we're going to call a screen shake. So let's go here. Let's go to our plugins function, call function, screen shake bunk. Let's add our two parameters, parameter one and parameter two. Let's make it a magnitude of five for 0 0.3 seconds long. And that should be good. The only other note I wanna have here is we're going to need to play the enemy death sound there. When we get to doing sound, that's what we're gonna to wanna to have play because it's a one hit kill when the player jumps on the enemy. So it should be pretty easy. Okay, so let's actually, let's preview that before we go forward. That way you get to see what we just did. So we're on our platform, and here's our enemy. He hits the collision, he flips, we jump on him, and it shakes, and because I'm at full health, it didn't drop anything, which is exactly what we wanted. Cool, so what we're going to do now is we're gonna find out what happens if we just run over the enemy, if we don't jump at all. That's when we actually want to uh, take damage. So to do this, we're gonna add another condition to our overlap. We're gonna to go to our player and we're gonna find out if we're flashing and then we're gonna invert it. So as long as we're not already taking damage from something, then we are clear to take damage from the enemy. Because if we're not flashing, we're gonna make it flash again. So let's go to our player and we're gonna just hit flash. And we're gonna do this for 0 0.05 seconds, 0 0.05 on and off for, let's leave it for one second and see how that does. Then, just like we did for over here, we're gonna control click and drag our screen shake function. Now we have one more function to add and we can actually just grab it from our spike function. When we collide with our spike, we actually call the player health function. So I'm gonna control C that and I'm gonna put it all the way down here because we want to actually lose some health. We wanna lose one thing of health from that. Then we're gonna make a note to also play the player hurt sound when we do our sound. So let's hit save and let's hit play. So let's see how this looks. I already took two damage, but now when I overlap, I should flash and I should take damage just like that and the screen shake played. So everything is working for our AI, which is really cool. But now that I have lost damage, I should be able to jump and now I should be able to get my health and now we probably wanna pick up that health. So let's do that real fast too, because that way we actually have uh, our health pickup in there. So to do our health pickup, let's hit B on our enemy AI. What we wanna do is, it's very simple. We just wanna go, if our player collides with our health pickup, then we are going to destroy the health pickup because we don't want it to be there anymore. And we actually wanna hit B and we wanna go system trigger once to make a sub event, B for our sub event. Then what we wanna do is we wanna subtract one from health because we're actually, it's all backwards, right? So what we wanna do here for our player health, let's subtract from our health. And that's actually going to add it back because we started at uh, zero and we're assuming that we're going down. So let's hit play and let's go over here. Uh, let me actually take damage though. Let's just take a little bit of damage. Let's take some more damage and some more damage. Why not? And we'll jump 
and then it'll add back because it was actually counting up. So now by subtracting down, it'll go back to zero, which is what we want because health at zero equals 100%. And this is just an extra way of doing it. Sure, you can make it so this will actually add back if that makes more sense to you. But that is how we can actually do this. And we can actually give this a subgroup and we can call this our health pickup. Uh, pickup. Cool. So that is how we do our enemy AI. So let's go put this around the map and let's actually copy and paste and add another one here. That way we have two chances. Now this is going to pick a random direction and so is this. So this one could be right and this one could be left as soon as they fall down and then they'll collide off of there. But what happens if we put one down here without putting anything else here? Let's see what happens to that. Cause I'm curious to know if it's gonna bounce off the spikes or if we're gonna need to put our own collision just to make sure that it doesn't go through the spikes. I think we're gonna have to put our own collision. But here I can just jump on both of these enemies' heads and I won't be given any health until I actually take damage, which I just took two things of damage and I got my health back. And let's see what happens here. So we have our enemy here and I just took some damage from it as well. And it's not bouncing off the spike. It's going to go all the way through and bounce off the wall. And sure, we can make it bounce off the spike if that's easier for you. But what we want to do is we actually want to just put in a left collision there. So let's just control click this down and let's put this right here. It's a simple fix. And if I were to really make this a full game, I might actually just add in the implementation for it to collide against this object, against our arrow object. But I think that this will work for right now. So that should actually work. Let's copy and paste our enemy again and let's put it somewhere else. Let's put it here where it actually has solid walls to collide with. So that should work fine. And let's put one here and let's put one by our secret coins over there. So now we have a few enemies spread out throughout the map and they're really supposed to just give us the advantage of being able to heal ourselves if we fall into one of these traps. So let's hit save and let's hit play. And that's all this enemy AI really does because that's really what you want it to do. You want it to be a way to actually lose health but also a bonus to actually gain health. So I already lost health from the spikes and now I can gain my health back. And oh, I almost fell right into his trap and now I'm back at full health, which is really nice. The screen shakes and all the other gameplay stuff that we're doing, it will actually be a thousand times more enhanced when we actually have sound. So I'm gonna get my health back. Let's go check out our other enemies. If I don't die, which I did. I like doing a short jump there since we included the variable jump height. It's kind of fun to see if you can actually make it there without having to uh, get injured. So let's see. Let's just wait for this. And this should now actually collide properly. We can wait to see if it does. It looks like it is though, which is nice. Yes, it is. I, of course, missed my platform, so we'll wait for it to come back. And I need to get to the edge here. And jump. And let's think. I guess I could add another enemy there right by our sign. Let me get our power up. Let me wall slide down. And we're going to be fixing those collisions just a little bit in a second here. Let me collect all of these coins. Because now, now the game's taking shape, right? Now the game's really getting tempting here. So this enemy is just bouncing off our solids, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. We don't have to put any collisions in there because it's by the walls. And let's go check on our other enemies here. Slide down so I don't be fooled by them. There we go. Wait for our spikes. Wait for our other spikes. Uh, I think we had coins there, didn't we? What happened to our coins there? Hmm, that's an interesting one. Not sure what happened to these coins. So let's put this on up here. Or let's move these coins up. Where did I put them on? Did I put them on... Let's find, oh, I probably put them on the pickups layer, didn't I? No. Let's see where I put them. It's on, well, wait a second. Oh, is it on the HUD layer? Because that'd be funny. It is. Let's take all of these and put them on the pickups layer. So I guess we could technically spawn the um, health onto the pickups layer, but doesn't it doesn't really matter because any layer that it any layer it'll collide with so we should be good there but okay that should be our 
enemy AI. What we're going to do is we're going to spend more time doing the boss AI. So I kind of wanted to split it up into two tutorials because the boss AI, even though now that we have our enemy AI, it's going to be very similar. We just have extra things to add for the trigger. And it's pretty important because a lot of boss battles uh, need that extra attention. So that's what we're going to do next. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.